Tony nominee and Broadway favorite Jonathan Groff has been keeping busy. On top of starring in season two of the Netflix hit Mindhunter and gearing up for Frozen 2's hotly anticipated movie release, he's back on the New York stage as the adorably nerdy Seymour in the off-Broadway revival of Little Shop of Horrors. Hear about why Little Shop might be the most fun he's ever had, what Luke Skywalker and Elsa have in common, and more on this week's Show People. Mr. Groff, good to see you. So good to see Welcome you. Welcome back to Show People. Thank you. I'm so happy to be back. I love when you're on the boards. Ah, uh, me too. I know. that. You know, the last time you were here, you said that nothing makes you happier than being on a bike in New York yes. City, riding to a theater, even to see a show, but ideally starring in a show. Yes. So you must be living your best life right now. You know me so well. I, and I saw you at Little Shop and you literally had like your bike helmet. You were yes. ready to get on your bike. Yeah, my mom got me a new bike helmet <laughs> in San Francisco that's blue, that lights up, that nice. does like a blinking well, light. Safety first. Yeah, safety first. Yep. Yeah, it's so great. I was I was riding home on my bike last night. I really, it's, it's such an amazing feeling thinking yeah. like, oh, I'm living my favorite version of my life right now. Well, congratulations. Thank you. And you're singing and yeah. dancing yes. and with a killer plant yes. off Broadway. It's very interesting, this Little Shop production. Yeah. They brought back Little Shop of Horrors, which obviously was an off-Broadway institution. Yeah. Went on to be a great film and a big Broadway production. Yes. It's sort of been everywhere, but they sort of, Michael Mayer, I guess, who you've known forever, yes. had a dream of bringing it back down a little bit, right? To its... Roots. You look at that. As they've been saying. Clever. It's not me. That's like the marketing people that it's like on a flag now <laughs> outside the theater. Back to its roots. Got it. Okay. But Michael, when he called us all to do it, that was his pitch. He right. said, I love Little Shop of Horrors. Mm -hmm. I saw it in the 80s. It, we're going to do it off Broadway. It's never moving to Broadway. And he said to all of us, I want to do this show for the reason that we all used to do shows, mm -hmm. which was just to have a blast and right. have a great time without the pressure of award season. No one's doing this to make a lot of money. Okay. He assembled a team of people that wanted to celebrate the show and have fun like we were doing summer stock. Yeah. And from the first day of rehearsal, it's been that vibe. Nice. And, and, and it's funny because you really get that, like as a cast and a, and a crew and a band, we feel that energy when we're about to do the show, but then you also feel that energy from the audience that people, because they're so close, mm -hmm. are there to celebrate the show and to have a good time. And it's like explosive in that little church on 43rd Street every night. It's been such a blast. Is it a former church? Yeah. Oh, oh who knew? I former church converted I into, yeah. I said to Michael, I was like, the last time we were in a church, it was at the Atlantic Theater. Where wow, we were Spring right. Awakening, Spring Awakening. Was also I saw it there, yeah. yeah. It's such a perfect venue for the show, and we're all just so obsessed with the show yeah. that it's like doing the high school musical or something. It it's, might be the most fun I've ever had. Wow. Look at you, a big statement. I know. You've done a lot of fun things. I know, I know. There's just something really joyful about this whole experience. I am also a Little Shop of Horse super fan. Okay, good to know. Been, I have been forever, okay. super fan. I saw it really early. I saw a few previews, kind of unfairly. I saw like a, maybe two or three previews into the run. And, you know, the show was in great shape. You, however, as Seymour, you looked like you were like Carol Channing in her final farewell tour as Dolly. <laughs> You looked like you had been rehearsing the role of Seymour your entire life. Oh my you God. Were so, you were like, <laughs> you were already giving the epic performance. You were so, is it true? Have you been singing Skid Row and Grow For Me? Yeah, listen. Down I'm in like, the farm yes. when you were a kid. Like it felt that way. They'll tell you that like when I showed up to rehearsal, I'm like a horse literally chomping at the bit to get out and do <laughs> this show. When I was 11 years old, I was singing Skid Row in the kitchen, crying. Sure. You were like Honestly, sweeping the floor? Yeah, sweep well. that floor? Your mom would sing, sweep that floor, kid? No. Don't really. <laughs> I would actually sweep the, the barn, like my dad's barn. Singing would it. Would be yep. sweeping, yes. Sure. So that it can really <laughs> call on. It was horse shit, so it was like a slightly different than like dirt, like plant dirt. But not that different. Kind of not that different. Same like vibe, <laughs> right. sort of. Sure. When Michael presented it to us in May and I listened to it, I just, as an adult, as a 34-year-old, yeah. like, I, had a, I had a memory of it as a kid of, of, you know, singing, someone show me a way to get out of here and like crying. And then I was like, oh, Little Shop, yeah. And I listened to it. And then from the day he told me about it to this day, I've listened to it every single 
day, so for months. I became obsessed. Which version are you listening to? The original off Broadway, off Broadway recording. Lee and I, well, I listen to all of them. Ellen really. Green, yes, the iconic. I mean, it is the original. And, but I also listen to Hunter, and I also sure. listen to the movies. I listen to all of it. Yeah. But really, because we were doing the off Broadway version, yeah. I listened to that one the most. But yeah. like, I just became obsessed uh-huh. with the show and obsessed with how brilliantly written it is. I and know. so it was like kind of coming back to something that I had like a childhood obsession with and then coming back to it knowing that we were going to get to perform it. And yeah. But I'm not the only one. Like Michael felt that way and Christian and Tammy and Jim everyone Royal, that's... Tammy Blanchard. Yeah, the, everyone that's been working on the show. They were all fans of the show. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I was like, they became deeply obsessed. Yeah. Deeply obsessed. Your Achilles heel is your uncontrollable laughter. <laughs> Like that. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. There, there's a, Remember when I had to do that intro? The yeah, last there's a time? great video on, we put it on YouTube. It's yeah. 107 seconds of you just <laughs> laughing and not being able to speak, not being able to do a very simple yes. Yes. one line. Yeah. We don't do those anymore. <laughs> we don't like, have time. Yeah, we don't, <laughs> we don't have time for Ain't you to try to figure it out. For that. Yeah, exactly. Um, you, you're a laugher. And mm-hmm. you also have talked about laughing on this set of your Netflix hit, Mindhunter, which mm-hmm. I love, which we're going to talk more about. Okay, great. Um, you have this problem. And I don't know how you're on stage with Christian Borle. I don't either. And I don't oh, know. I'm just I, my sphincter is very tight. Whenever Christian <laughs> Borle is on stage, too much information. I know that's a headline. <laughs> that's a headline. I'm like <laughs> trying not to, but it but it also doesn't work. He will then in turn laugh at me because oftentimes, especially in the second act when he comes when he does what I call his hat hat trick, where he comes on as those three characters, yes. boom 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 during the Meek Shalin during Harris. the Meek Shalin Harris. Yeah, and he comes out. I'm just like, <laughs> just. Not in character. I'm just laughing at him because he's so funny. I just, I can't help but smile. Yeah. And Tammy Blanchard. Tammy Blanchard of Bayonne. Do you like Jersey Girls? She's a real Jersey girl. Very authentic. I, I love Tammy. I feel the actual love for her. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I, I can, I am in love with her. Yeah. We all are. She is, as you know, she is just insanely lovable, so unique, so special, and when I see her, I feel love in my heart. I'm just deeply, deeply in love with her. And suddenly Seymour is just like, never anything I would have ever anticipated. The way that she, what she brings to that and the way I feel towards her while it's happening is like, it's real love. I mean, I just, I feel so in love with her and I just am deeply obsessed. We all are, we're all so obsessed with Tammy. Deeply obsessed. Mm -hmm. Everyone, the whole, we all t- t- try to do her accent backstage. <laughs> she has a, her, her beautiful daughter, Ava, yeah. has c- came to our rehearsals and uh-huh. came to our run through in the rehearsal room and sat next to Michael, the director, and the girls come out at the, at the beginning, Salome and Joy and Ari, and they were like, tell your mama something gonna get her. Right, so they're looking at her daughter. <laughs> she, so her family's kind of been a part of the show. For uh-huh. the, you know, we're always asking about Ava, and so it's just been a really, like, special special experience with her i love it i also love you being just like super nerd people think of you as a a hunk because of some of the things you've done i always thought knowing you i've always found you to be kind of an unlikely hunk is that fair to say (laughs) sure like because your personality isn't like i love when i see you like smoldering in a photograph (laughs) you do too right not smiling because it's so not who i am yeah michael well this was when michael we went to see uh he invited me to rigoletto his final Rigoletto at the yeah, Met that's been right. going on for years. Yeah. This was back in May and we were at the first intermission and he said, I think I found, because it's been 13 years since we've done a show together, but we've stayed friends and hang out. A little show them. called Spring Awakening. Spring Awakening, yes. right. And uh, we were at the intermission and he sort of teased me. He uh-huh. was like, I think I, he's like, what are you doing this fall? I was like, I'm not <laughs> doing, I don't know, I'm not doing anything. And he said, I think I, think I have the next show that we're going to work on because I know something about you that people don't really know. Which is what? That you and I was like, what? what? I, <laughs> he didn't, that's literally all good, he said? That was, that was all he said. And I was like, that's such a smart director. Because as an actor, I'm like, what do you know about me? That, you know, it's like such a <laughs> right. smart, that smart thing to say to an actor. And then, and then a week later, he, you know, we talk about Little Shop of Fours, and he was like, because I know you're a nerd. Like, as, as a person, yeah. I, know, I know that this is going to be more of a natural fit for you just in who you are right. than Melchior or King George the Third, right. which it does feel like more right. more who I am. Right. And my friends that have come to see it are like, oh, I feel like I'm actually seeing you on stage. Right. A big nerd. 
Yeah. We'll be back <laughs> with Jonathan Graff after this break. And we're back with super sex symbol and Broadway nerd, <laughs> Jonathan Graff. How you doing? I'm good. You having a good time? Such a good, good time. It's speeding by. Okay, yeah, I I'm know. also appreciating your like flowery green tie. Thank you, Target. In not, no way. <laughs> Target. I love it. It's there. I don't know if you intended it as part of the Little Shop theme, but. I, I think about these things Maybe sometimes. subconscious or I don't know. Yeah, so Frozen 2 mm -hmm. is about to hit movie theaters. I'm mm -hmm. sure it's gonna be huge. It must be nice to have a big epic thing about to come out. Sure. So exciting. Yeah, sure. of course. The opposite of 270 people a night at Little Shop. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot. Totally, it's a totally. Lot. You're obviously the voice of Kristoff. Everyone knows that. And you did it in the first film as well. And, you know, some of your film co-stars, I don't even know if they saw Frozen on Broadway, but you were literally at opening night of the out of town run in Denver. And I saw you there, you're, that's yeah. how much of like a, you were like, I'm really excited to see yeah. Frozen. Like you, there's no like level of cool to you sometimes. No. Which is what everyone loves about you, I think. Okay, good. Yeah. That's just who I, that's just how I am. I know, and you were there. I and you wait like, to see at it. intermission, you were like, oh my God, like let it yes. go, it just happened. And you were losing your mind. Yes, and that I loved dress that. rip off was I, I know. everything I, I wanted I, I, it to I know. be. I know, you were like, did you see that? Yeah. It was like, yeah, we all saw it. It was amazing, it was amazing. So I think that's. I that's, can't even like pretend to not be that way. No, I know. That's great, yeah. though. Yeah. That's great. We appreciate that. Okay, good. Don't ever change. Okay. And if you do, I'm going to call you out on it. Okay. So Frozen 2, I really had ha uh, big dreams of Kristoff having more of a moment, and it looks like Kristoff has a little song called Lost in the Woods. There's a solo track oh, yeah. on the new soundtrack. That's exciting. It is a has, Christoph... moment. Okay, well, I was dreaming of this moment. Oh my I, God. I like to think I helped secret it because you totally I said helped we're doing a it. sequel. Kristoff needs his big moment. I don't know if they knew you could sing, but you, you are able to do a big musical moment. Right. Lost in the Woods sounds highly dramatic. I don't know the context it yet. It is highly <laughs> dramatic. Good, okay, good. It is highly dramatic. I honestly, this the sort of like funny story of this that I haven't really told yet uh -huh. is that they had written a song. I, I, first of all, I was, everyone came up to me on the creative team of the movie and they were like, wait, you know, would feel I'm so apologetic. You didn't get more of a song and we're gonna, you know, we're gonna get you a musical moment in the second movie, whatever. And I was like, look, I, I just, I don't care. I'm just happy to be in Frozen. I would love to sing in Frozen. But I also was like, how are they gonna make the Mountain Man character sing? How do you get Kristoff to sing? I couldn't right. really like imagine how that was ever gonna happen. Yeah. And they wrote a song while we were making the second season of Mindhunter. Okay. And I flew to New York on the weekend and recorded this amazing song that Bobby and Kristen, who cannot write a bad song, wrote for the movie. Two months later, I'm in a, then in a recording session in Pittsburgh on the weekend, and they were like, so we're cutting the number. And I was like, oh, okay, wow. okay, I get wow, it. Okay. And they're like, but we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna write you a nut. We have this idea about this moment that he could have okay. about whatever. And I thought, that's they're being very sweet to say that they're, and maybe, you know, maybe this song will play over the credits of them. Sure. They were being very apologetic and very sweet. Uh -huh. and, and I was like, they're being so nice. And, and then they wrote the song. So it's a new song and you're happy with this one. Oh my God, it's so good. Is this gonna become one of your new anthems? Is, <laughs> it, is, it, a, is it a powery? Is it a power anthem? It is very funny and very emotional. Good. And very surprising. Even I had recorded it and when I saw the movie, I was like, I cannot believe they are going there right now with this, with this particular moment. But honestly, with the entire movie as a whole, uh -huh. I, was, I was completely blown away by where they go with the story, where they go with the characters. It looks like Game of Thrones. It does. Or and a it, Marvel film. Or, totally. I mean, it's, it's big from, it, the, from what I've seen. It's big. It's complicated, it's emotional, it's insanely moving. I took my mom on her birthday to see an early screening of uh -huh. the movie, and it was the first time I had seen it as well. And we went to dinner afterwards, and we were both just like, 
whoa, that was so good. <laughs> and she took out these tissues. I, I have two adorable, a two and a four-year-old niece. Uh -huh. And she took out these tissues out of her bag, and they were Elsa Anna tissues, right? Because <laughs> it's like bath soaps. But, and I looked at the tissues, and I was like, I will never look at these two women the same way <laughs> after seeing that second movie. They're on tissues, you know, because you sort of relate, at least I did, yeah. you relate to like now the dolls and the little kids yeah, dressing yeah. up. The maturation and the depth of these women in this movie mm -hmm. are, Christoph, it's great, he gets an amazing moment, I'm so happy about that. But this like, the, the, the depth that they go to with these, these female characters uh -huh. are like, it's truly extraordinary and I can't, wait for people to see it, and it's, it, it, I was shocked. My hair was like, <gasps> it's so dramatic. Uh -huh. It's that trailer is a very good sort of teaser yeah. into how the movie feels, uh -huh. where they they just went for it in, 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 in just a completely unexpected, very beautifully profound way, in my opinion. I think it's also interesting because it feels like the Broadway musical was sort of a bridge yeah. for that because they spent so much time making the Broadway musical a little deeper. And totally, they, and totally. So it's interesting and how... filling in the gaps, kind of, and sort of like stretching out the characters a yeah. little bit. And then they really took that. Now it feels to me when I saw the second movie, with all due respect to the first movie, which I also yeah. love, but it really felt like... Well, it did well for you. It did, yeah. yeah. Good for your career. But the first movie feels like a tee-up for like... It feels like Empire Strikes Back <laughs> okay. to me. As far as like sequels, you know, like you see A New Hope and it's like, oh wow, this seems very... Uh -huh. simplistic compared to the depths that you uh -huh. go to in the second film. So it's Frozen 2 Elsa Strikes Back. Some, <laughs> exactly. Some, somebody. Kind of. So is, um, is Christoph still hot? I think so. He's super sexy. Yeah. yeah, he's super sexy, okay. I feel really lucky to be so, his voice box. So you have, you have feelings for the guy whose voice is you. Mm. Must be a weird relationship. He's so handsome. <laughs> well, he's a cartoon, so it's not like sure. complicated in that sure. way. But, but, but yeah, no, he's... Who doesn't like two-dimensional guys? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he's, no, he, and he's, in the second movie, he's very into taking his relationship with Oh, Anna I, I, I've heard, I've read level. some rumors. Oh, about, you did. He seems to be ready to have a life with Anna. I feel like Anna and Kristoff, both as characters, are very quirky and kind yeah. of unexpected yeah, yeah. romantic partners. Sure. And so that, there's a lot of humor in that, and Kristen Bell is so amazing and hilarious, and it's fun to play a sort of like quirky version of that. Yeah, so did you record with her a lot? Never, never so recorded with her. Everything you do is by yourself. Mm -hmm. It must be kind of mind blowing to hear your voice and to remember you, say, you said these things, yeah. but now you're watching it in the context of this entire experience and interacting with people you've never sat in a room with and it must be so weird. I have no, uh, I, f I have no feeling of ownership over it. Right. I right. have no feeling, it just because it also, the animators are really mm -hmm. the, not to downgrade anything that voice actors do right. because, you know, I'm so proud to be the voice of, but the, like when we recorded the song that I get to sing, that was so fun and it's a beautiful song. And then you see what the animators do and mm. it's like, they're just so brilliant. It, even though you're, we're in it as the voices, I don't, f I feel like, I feel like lucky to be the voice coming out of the character that the, that the animators have created. Right. Well, I can't wait to see it. I'll be I can't there. wait for you to see it. Okay, we'll have to have a full on download. And the songs, like Bobby and Kristen also, it's like next level. They just like wrote these incredible, incredible, like gutsy, amazing songs. And Adina, it's Menzel. like, yeah. I mean, still, it's- Still delivering it. I mean, Come on. <laughs> I can't believe I'm in a, a musical movie where Adina Menzel sings her face off. Yeah. And we sing, we sing together a little bit. There's like this oh. cute opening number uh -huh, that yeah. all the four of us all uh -huh. sing in. And we've done like press events where we're singing together. Uh -huh. And I'm just like, I can't believe it's so crazy. You keep your cool though. Yeah, she's so cool. And she, you know, and like she's so just there to work. She doesn't have like, She's right. not diva y at right, all. Right. And so you're singing with her and there's no Edina, like her, it's just her talent that's right. that, you know, she doesn't carry any of that mystique as a person. Right. She's so chill and so also kind of like nerdy in her way and adorable. Broadway loves nerds. On that note, we'll be back with more Jonathan Graff after this break. We 
are back with Jonathan Groff in Little Shop of Horrors. Little or Frozen 2. Huge. <laughs> <laughs> Options. <laughs> exactly. Options. Well, what's funny too is like I'm reminded when I'm listening every night to Little Shop, it's Howard, Howard Ashman and Ellen Menken. Yeah. And it's sort of like the birth, which Little Shop is kind of the origin oh, I know. of the birth of... The entire Disney career yes. started because of the Little Shop yes. show and film. Yes. And then that turned into this... The rebirth of the like right. late 80s Disney Frozen wave. is on a path, is totally, they're linked. It's, there's like a relationship to Little Shop of Horrors. Right. So you can really like feel that. And Howard Ashman, you know, they said was... When he came to Disney with Little Mermaid, it was yep. his yep. idea. Mm -hmm. They called him another Walt for the mm. for the, as he was developing Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast and Aladdin. Mm -hmm. uh, tragically, died of AIDS in 1991 and yeah. couldn't continue that sort of reign, uh, you know, with Alan. But yeah, you can really feel the seeds of it in in Little Shop. The storytelling, the way that like those Disney musicals are so perfect. That is how I feel about Little Shop. It's like a, a hit parade of songs. Uh -huh. Really amazing yeah. dynamic story with a lot of humor and that just like boom, 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 boom. You learn so much getting the opportunity to do it eight times a week right. when you do something that's well written. I have a honest, embarrassing question. What the hell is Graf sauce? <laughs> it came from Lynn, that I know. Lynn started calling me Graf sauce. I don't know why he started calling me Graf sauce, but I think it was in that period of time when people used to say awesome sauce. Uh, Remember people uh -huh. used to say that? But he started calling me that and then he started tweeting that and it's then it thing. became like, no one in my life c calls me that. It, Lynn occasionally they? does, but but no <laughs> one no one really actually calls me that. Right, so what does it taste like? It's just... Great question. I, I think if you sit in the front row of Little Shop of Horrors, you'll find out because I'm spewing Graf sauce <laughs> all over the first three rows <laughs> while I'm singing. <laughs> and whatever that tastes to, like, that's what it um, tastes like. Projectile spitting. spitting. Yes. You're, you're referring to that. Yes. You brought it up. Um, <laughs> so, so yes, you do, you, you have that. A yeah. lot of people have that. I mean, that's a thing. And in a very small venue, you see it. Yes. So um, are you self-conscious about it? I was self-conscious. The first couple of weeks, I felt bad. Because I, 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 I do you, spit do you all the see time people before. with like to, do they give towels out in the first couple rows? Why, they why? should. <laughs> uh, I, I I knew that I'd spit before, and in Spring Awakening at the stage tour, occasionally people would ask me to spit in their program. That's weird. Bizarre. Spring Awakening had a weird fan base at times. <laughs> <laughs> and but in the West Side Theater, I've never been so close to people. Right. So I've spit before. And I've seen it in the lights, you know, as I'm, and I can't help it. And or in Hamilton, I would do it. But I've never been so close to people where I'm seeing it happen, and then I'm seeing the reaction of people while it's happening. <laughs> and so the first couple months, I felt, I actually felt like in my heart, I would go like, Aww. I would feel like, oh no, I'm taking them out of the show. I'm not. Suddenly, they're like thinking about me spitting on them, and they're not lost in the story of what's happening. And then, a couple of weeks ago. I got over it, yeah, oh and right. I was like, you know what? I, this is just how it is. I can't. I can, really can't control it. Well, right. I can't, sure. I can't. It just is what happens when I project on Glee. They would say, "Could you?" Like, I really remember when we were doing Bohemian Rhapsody. They said, "Could you please dial it back on the spitting because you were like you're like, spitting into the camera." Dial it back, like you were doing it on purpose. <laughs> I'm not. It just right. is what happens. Yeah, and, and I and I was like, I. I could lip sync and then not do it, sure. but I can't like, not, I can't not do it when I'm singing. It's part of your charms. Okay, thank you. I'm into it. I, over the past couple weeks, I've just been like, this is just what's happening. I'm just gonna keep moving forward and then hope that people will just catch up to me. You know, and get over this. If spin. you were a horrible singer, it'd be really annoying. It'd be like this guy can't this sing any spitting on me. This, this is, isn't this worth is, it. This is, right. <laughs> this is not worth it. <laughs> right. <laughs> you don't spit on Mine Hunter. I love Mine Hunter. Oh, uh, it's it, season two was fantastic. It totally lived up to the promise of season one. Good. I don't know if there'll be a season three. I hope so. We, we don't know. know. I yeah. hope so. I, I would love to keep seeing you in serial killers and moody lighting and same, same. it's good. I love also thinking about how crazy your fan base is now, like how diverse it is. It's, it's kind of funny. <laughs> totally. It's, it's funny to be on something like that and these other things that we're talking about. Totally. Even like Frozen 2 and Mindhunter. It's just, yeah, it's, it's yeah, cool. Yeah, totally, totally. It's cool. It's funny because a lot of Leah's husband's friends, it's like straight dudes. Wait. There's a lot of, there's like a whole straight dude contingency. Leah, 
Leah Michelle's Michelle, husband. Leah yes, Michelle. Michelle. How is she? Say hi. Oh, Leah Michelle's great. husband. She yep. got married. Yep. Her There's husband. This whole yes. Pack of straight yeah, dudes. Yeah. Like that dudes. you are now, that you are now exposed to. Yes. A new and pack. That I met dudes. all of them at the wedding. Right. And they okay. were like, dude, it's <laughs> olden, right? And so I was like, wow. Or even like sometimes when I'm uh, like in the West Village, uh -huh. I'll get like dudes. I've I've had like musical theater people. Right. Sure. I've had like girl teenage girls yeah. and moms. Yeah. And you know, like theater fans or whatever. Yeah. With looking, I had a lot of gay guys, and where I live in Chelsea, You've coming up the to straight me about looking. And then I was like, "Wow, this is interesting, Mindhunter. It's like a, it's like a different yeah. type of person that I'm used to coming up and recognizing. They're like, "Dude, are you Holden?" I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> completely different thing. It's great." And at, at Leah's wedding, one of one of Zandy's friends was like made a joke about like, "I think there's a seat over there next to Ed Kemper." It's like that's so cute. <laughs> Inside joke. Yeah. I love it. I love that. Uh, yeah. I love your your co-star Holt. Oh, me um, too. Who I got to meet at the Little Shop opening. Yes. He was there because he he likes the Graf sauce. He was very excited oh my to gosh. see well, Little Holt Shop. Well, Holt is Holt's mother is Julie a, Wilson. Julie Wilson. <laughs> Julie Wilson was a cabaret icon. Yes. Also on Broadway in Legs Diamond. Yes. Tony nominated. Tony nominated. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I saw her in that. Yes. I'm old enough. Oh my um, God! Did yes. you tell him that you saw her in that? I didn't because I didn't want to like fangirl about his mom. You, ha you no, she he would love fantastic. it. He and his mom were very close. So and so he grew up around music. He yes. sings. Yes, which I didn't realize. This so is I love Holt for you a sing. Yes. So now I'm wondering maybe there's something you guys could do together. We would sing. Oh, I would love to. We would sing all the time on set. And Holt, there's so many reasons to love Holt th yeah. and the things that make him lovable. And one of them is that he's got this random, unexpected knowledge of obscure Gershwin songs. <laughs> I and, love that. And he's very <laughs> entrenched in the cabaret community yeah. because he became friends with all of those people through yeah. his mom. And so he's got this real insidery view of musicals and of theater. Right. And he and I, whenever we you know, are hanging out in New York, we always go see a play. We've seen a million plays together. That's cool. And it's part of one of the things that we bond it over oh, nice. and he's like a real theater he made his Broadway debut uh, as an understudy in Biloxi Blues okay back in All the right. 80s yeah. and so he he needs to come back on stage regardless yeah because he's such a phenomenal yeah actor. so you're gonna work on making that happen we got to make that happen I was actually I just jumped up um, you guys could do City of Angels together Are there any Great. other shows I don't really know City of Angels that well no one's City like a nerdy writer and one's like a tough guy detective Perfect. You'd be the nerdy writer. And he'd be the tough guy <laughs> detective. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's like, I, I'm going to make a list of other ones because Great. Uh, I'm, I like this idea. I want to ask you finally, you're from Lancaster. Am I saying it right? Lan you could say it however you want. No, there's no right I'm going to say it right. If you're, from, like, if you're from where I'm from, yeah. you would say Lancaster. Lancaster. Yeah, oh, there you go. Yeah, Lancaster. For and I've moment. been there because we did that shoot for Susan Blackwell. Yes. So I was actually on the farm where you grew up, which was amazing. Yes. And I loved hearing that you go to community theater around there because I do that. I go to community theater all the time. Yeah. Like I just saw Mamma Mia this summer. You saw Mamma Mia this summer, right? I saw two Mamma Mias this Every year. Every theater did Mamma Mia saw, this summer. <laughs> there was a lot, yes, totally. It's kind of like what you said about Little Shop, like doing it for the right reason. Totally. Whenever I walk into a, a less professional theater environment, it's like they're all there because their like heart and souls are really in it. Hundred percent. The Fulton Opera House is like, or the Fulton Theater now it's called, is like a for professional. Is that you did Bat Boy. I did Bat Boy. The at, other one at at the Everett of Performing Arts Center, which is a community theater okay. where none of the actors get paid, and it's people from the community that okay. are phenomenally gifted and and like you said doing it for the love of it yeah and also so talented like right. the people that I worked with there are so gifted and I love going back to I saw Spring Awakening there uh -huh. I saw hair there a couple of years ago at, at EPAC and it's You're always just going good. through your resume <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your I only see shows that life. I had previously done yeah I saw in my life there <laughs> but the but Michael Cerverus actually when we were shooting Mindhunter in uh, Pittsburgh yeah he also like saw everything oh, in, wow. in Pittsburgh. He goes to see theater as well. It's like, it should be more part of like the just like going to movies, going to theater, yeah. no matter where mm -hmm. you are, because it's always, I love live theater is just always interesting yeah. and always entertaining. And you bought like land near your parents, or you bought a house or something? Yeah, so I bought a house that is butting up against my dad's horse farm. And okay. my ultimate dream is to turn my dad's horse farm into like an artist colony. And, and turn the horse sort of stalls into an editing suite for, for your, my friends to go there and edit their movie or a recording studio wow. to go record their album and a little like 
rehearsal area to workshop their show or to write their novel or my dream is to at some point part of part of it was inspired by Susan coming down there and actually on Gideon Glick's final weekend of performances of Spring Awakening uh -huh. my aunt and my mother came to New York in a in a in a short school bus uh -huh. and picked up the entire cast and we Oh, wow. Slept out in tents on oh, my dad's amazing. horse farm. So the entire cast, this original cast of Spring Awakening was there to celebrate Gideon's last show. And it's just a very kind of create, I did, I was Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz there oh, when I was I a heard, kid. Yeah. It's a creative, it's like sort of just always been a creative ins ins inspiration for me, just that land in general. And so I want to cultivate that and it's very close to New York and I want to just yeah. create a space where people can go and make work privately, not like turn it into a performance thing or anything, but just be a place where people can go to like be in the quiet and build a little fire in the fire pit and create art. Cool. Where, is, where do you picture yourself like as an 80 year old man? What's the dream? Oh, probably riding my bike home from a play that I either <laughs> seen or was in. Riding a bike in New York City <laughs> yeah. to a show. I'm very consistent in that <laughs> regard. That would be that would be my ultimate dream. If I could still be riding my bike at 80, yeah. then I would be feel very lucky. They might just be like self riding by then or something. I don't oh know. Oh God! Well, there's all those electronic <laughs> bikes in the bike lane now. I know. But I do like like the single speed. You know what I mean? Old school. Yeah, old school. I like how classic you are, Jonathan Groff. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Uh, hey, everyone needs to see you in Little Shop of Horrors at the West Side Theater <laughs> and um, <laughs> in every <laughs> movie theater in the world in Frozen yes, Two. Yes. Mine Hunter on Netflix. There's a lot of Groff sauce to go around. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Thank Good to you. See you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.